Okay, the MGF for gamma, uh, which was on um, previous year's exam paper, even though it was not in any of the class exercises. But hey, once you know the rules of how to manipulate MGFs, you can use it for any given distribution. So here we go. Always start off by stating definition. X was given on the previous page. X is gamma. Alright, so this here we have e to the tx times the PDF for a gamma, which was given on the previous page, so I just copy it out again. It's the gamma function, gamma to the k. Don't be too concerned about what that is because that's going to disappear. Right, and we're integrating over the possible values of x now for a gamma x the outcome could take the values zero upwards and I'm using integral sign because a gamma is a continuous distribution like that okay yeah I was saying don't be worried about this gamma function here um, which my students don't see anyway uh, this is just some kind of function to imagine that's the input k that'll give you this gamma is like f of k it's going to give you something out Right, so as before with the other MGFs, I'm going to just gather terms, x terms here. So, hmm. uh, all right, e is k minus one, x one minus theta minus t dx. Alright, now why have I written it with a minus sign instead of a plus sign? So you might have thought plus sign is more convenient. Well, if I write it this way, I can see immediately that this integral has a chance of existing if this stuff in the brackets is not negative. Because e to a positive power it's just going to grow and grow and grow. So if you try to integrate it from zero to infinity, it's not going to exist. Okay, so now let's just do it on the side. Remember that e to the x, as x tends to infinity, is just going to go one. It's going to keep going. Whereas if I have e and it's got a negative value, a negative x, then it's going to go this way, isn't it? we can write the condition that this is um, the integral exists uh, the integral uh, is finite let's say this is going to be a number if 1 over theta minus t is bigger than or equal to 0 doesn't really matter it's about strict inequality because it's continuous, the chance that equal to a point value is zero. So I'll write it like this. Oops, zero. Or another way of saying this is that t is less than one over theta. So that's a condition. And you're gonna even if you didn't pick it up here, you'll see at the end that it must hold. So the MGF doesn't necessarily exist unless that t is less than one over theta. More on that later. So continuing on with that. What I can see is that some terms do not depend on x, and you're integrating of x, so just take it out. Um, to simplify things, since this thing always comes together in a lump, we might have just called it a, to a as a function of k or something, then we don't have to keep writing this blob out every time. Okay, more stuff you got, got to write out increase the chances of making an error. We don't want that. Okay, then I copy this stuff again. Now, instead of writing this out all the time, because it's going to be a messy thing to do, this stuff all in brackets. Why don't I just call it one over phi like that? 
and you'll see why I want it like that uh, later. So I have got here x to the phi dx. Now, what we can recognize, and this is something I've used before, is we don't actually have to do any integration, thank goodness, is because this thing, which is called the integrand, it's what we're integrating, is it's from a gamma. And it's a technique I've shown you previously. This whole thing is from a gamma with parameter uh, k and phi. So what we have is that this is going to equal to k phi to the k in constants. Now I'm kind of just weighing up whether I should bother to just kind of explain a bit more about this bit here. Um, so what we have is that basically producing the idea that the integral of a PDF is one, all right, for any legitimate one, and something that is gamma with parameter k and parameter phi is going to look like what I've written earlier on. This stuff, um, well, no, not that stuff. This stuff here, this stuff here, but where you see k, you remain right k, but where you see theta, you replace that with phi. But if you do that, you can see that this is part of it. So, and, and this thing would change, um, this theta would change to phi. And that's why this theta has gone to phi, is that phi there, and these two here remain the same. All right, so what we have is that firstly these two guys cancel out and we've got phi over theta k. What's really good about this is that I've avoided integration altogether. So the MGF is phi over theta. Of course, we can't leave it like this because we've got to, you know, what is phi? We kind of defined it earlier. So we've got to substitute it back in. Now, if we just take so I'll explain now phi over theta is equal to well what is it equal to? Aha. Uh -huh. So let's do some working on the side here. Well we said one over phi is equal to one over theta minus t from here. So now I'm just going to arrange to get phi up in the numerator. Writing this is the same as writing 1 minus theta t over phi. Therefore, phi is equal to theta 1 minus theta t. So I can write here now that is equal to theta 1 minus theta t divided by phi. That's the same as saying 1 over phi, uh, theta, sorry, 1 over theta. These here thetas cancel out, and I'm left with 1 over 1 minus theta to the t. Therefore, mgf that we want, m to the t, which is equal to theta over th phi over theta to the power of k, is going to be equal to 1 minus theta to the t, and the whole thing to the power of k. And for the condition given earlier, and this is okay so long as t is less than 1 over theta. Okay, and that's the result. Now, the next thing I want to do, I want to move on to use this to calculate the moments. First and second moment. Let's rewrite that. Uh, MGF. So we found that the MGF now of the gamma is 1 minus theta t to the power of minus k. We know that first 